about reference and the fourth is about relaxation. So waking up, you know, uh, when we wake up, you know, we find ourselves sometimes face down, face up, left, right, up, down. So what you want to do is as soon as you wake up, you want to kind of lie flat on your back, bend your knees and can breathe deep into your abdomen. Because during the night, the circulation, the breathing, everything slows down. So there's a lot of water piles up in the base of your lungs. So you want to do some deep breathing and sort of get that out of your lungs. If not, you'll wind a lot of times when you get up, you go and like you start coughing and you know the mucus sort of builds up. So this is an easy way of getting it circulated into the blood and getting it out of the system. So just sit, lie down, bend your knees and take nice deep breathing, breathing into your abdomen. So that helps to kind of get the circulation going, get the lungs working to their full capacity again. After that, you want to sit up and you want to start, do a sort of a dry massage. You want to kind of start from the top of your head, massage like this. You know, do your face, do the neck, do your thyroid glands, you know, make a firm hands and then just rub through your thyroid glands like that. And then you want to go and massage your shoulders, you want to grab your collarbone, like make a V and then rub against the collarbone. You know, you want to rub your shoulders and the joints, you want to do a round massage like that with your hands. You don't want to put too much pressure or force, you know, you don't want to get tired doing it, but you just want to gently rub. The straight surfaces, you go up and down, the joints you go round and round. So you go through your hands, then you, know, you want to cap on your chest, and then when it comes to back, you really want to kind of rub your back from top down, like that. Top down, bottom up. So what this will do is kind of get your muscles, your back muscles kind of relaxed, and then you'll be, you know, the back. It's also like a scanning, you do your personal MRI. You know, as you're scanning through your hands and arms and the body, you'll find out like, oh my God, like, what happened? You know, there's some pain here. So then, you know, you get an opportunity to do something about it. So that's how you go scanning all around, you go to the legs and that. Once you are done, before you step foot off your bed, you want to drink about 1.2 liters of water. Okay, on an average, the capacity of the stomach is about 1.2 liters. So you want to fill it up. You know, most of the time you go take shower, you know, 40 gallons. The amount of area that's covered outside is far less than what needs to be covered inside. So 1.2 liter is basically you fill your stomach up with water. And just by the weight of the water, you know, it pushes through the small intestine, the large intestine, and it sort of cleans up. So by the time you walk from your bed to your bathroom, you want to go. Defecation is like that. It's just very easy. If you look at it, the colon is about this long, this wide. And most of the time, we say, well, I'm regular. We go, oh, how much? Maybe that much. So we want to clear it up. Drinking a lot of water first thing in the morning, it helps to eliminate and then you, you know, you'll be able to breathe better and it'll be clean like that. So once you're done there, the next thing is you want to massage your gums with sesame seed oil. You know, we wake up and we brush our teeth. Right? Why? Did you go eating at night? No. So why do we need to brush the teeth? The gums need to be massaged and sesame seed oil is great for that. So you take sesame seed oil, some people call it oil pulling. But even better than that is massaging the gums with your fingers. So you get the good blood going in the gums. Then you're going to take some sesame seed oil again and put it in your nostrils. You know, put some oil in the nostrils. You'll say, why? So air and oil don't get along. You know, most of the time, the sinus infections, one of the reasons is because the skin gets dry, the mucous membrane dries up, it cracks open, infects and sets in. So oil and air don't get along. So when you put oil in it, it keeps it nice and moist. And you'll avoid about 60-70% of your sinus infection. It's great for kids. And if you want to put them in kindergarten, you'll avoid all sick days. They won't fall sick. Especially the, uh, the sinus issues. So that'll keep all this stuff nice and you know, healthy and keep the breathing going. Then comes the shower. So you want to do a nice lukewarm, not too hot. You know, it's basically nice kind of 
cleaning your body up, you know. I mean, in this country, how dirty do we get? Right? How dirty do we get? Not much, you know. I mean, everything is like clean. Everywhere, you know, it's clean, clean, clean. India, I mean, you know, an hour, you'll sweat and all this riksa smoke coming up, you'll be black and blue. You need some more time there. <laughs> in this country, it doesn't need much, you know. So just kind of a little bit warm. And you also like, you know, when you take the warm water, your pores of the skin open up. These pores open up and sort of, you know, some of the toxins come up to the surface and gets up to the skin. So after the shower or at the end, you want to drop some cool water. Not cold, but cool water because you want to close the pores down again. You don't want to keep it open. So you want to close the pores down and then again you want to hand dry. Meaning you want to dry your body with your hands. Get the water off by your hand first. So that's again you know, another MRI, you know. See if you missed anything, you know, if there are any issues, bones broken, skin tender. So you can, you can find out and do something about it. So that's the uh, sort of waking up sequence that we talked about. Then the meals, you know, it's not, I mean, we ask about what should I eat, what should I not eat. But a lot of times our choices are very limited. You know, I'm standing in Starbucks line and then, you know, I'm eating, like, what am I supposed to eat? Well, the choices are there, right? You pick something from there. So the choices are fewer, but what we should do is, what is in our control is 30 minutes prior to the meal, drink 8 ounces of water. So what the water does is it lines the stomach up nicely, gets it ready, it gets into the water, gets into the blood, and it hydrates all the cells of all the organs, and they are ready. They say, all right, I'm relaxed, bring it on. Most of the time, we don't chew over food, and we are eating wrong combination of food. So all that concentrated stuff and gets into the blood, all the cells are like, oh my God, what do you do with this? But if the water has already gone and hydrated everything, they're like, all right, we'll deal with this because we have the flexibility of doing it. So 30 minutes prior to the meal, eight ounces of water. That'll get things going. For food, you want to avoid protein and starch. Don't mix them together, like meat and potatoes. Meat and white bread, you want to avoid it. Meat, dark green vegetables are great. Because what happens is protein requires, stomach is one compartment, you know, there's only one compartment. Most people, one compartment. I don't know how many people have more than one compartment, but one compartment. And protein requires a certain kind of environment, okay? And starch requires another kind of environment. And the, the stomach can only be one at one time, you know. If you have one pot to cook in, and if you invite a vegetarian and a non-vegetarian, you're going to be in trouble. How are you going to cook? Just like that. So if you separate them out, you'll feel that the digestion is great. After meal, you'll be, feel a little better. Not like, oh my God, i, I got to go to sleep now. <laughs> so you know, separate out protein and starch. 30 minutes prior to drink 8 ounces of water, and an hour later, 8 ounces of water in. Every hour, you want to drink 8 ounces of water because respiration, defecation, urination, perspiration, the water sort of comes out of the body. Most of the diseases are because of dehydration. You know, if you just drink water, and you know, the model is here, right? The earth, three quarters water, one fourth is solid. So water, you don't drink a lot of water. Um, after a meal, you know, after a meal, you know, 1,000 steps, the digestive system, Stomach is, you know, like a furnace. It's hot. It needs to be hot. So after a meal, you know, walk about thousand steps. Not like exercising, but gentle steps. One thousand steps. What that does is it's sort of like, you know, blowing air into the furnace. You know, you blow air. So the legs are like your, 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 your pipes that blow air into the furnace to get the heat going in the stomach. That helps digestion. You know, you want to get some burp coming out after meal. You know, what the burps give you is the sign of digestion. You know, the first one usually is like air. So that's kind of, you know, the air escaping. The second one should be the one, should be the food that you ate. Then you know that the food is getting digested. And then you can sit down. That will help the digestion. Most of the time we eat, or we, we eat watching TV or, you know, 
working on the computer, and then after the same, you know, after eating, we're doing the same thing again. So that kills the digest, digestive system. So we want to, um, 1,000 steps. And you can check it out, test it out, you know, you don't have to believe it, just try it, and if you feel good, continue. The stomach, again, is a warm organ, you know, it needs heat. Ice cold water, it conflicts. So, you know, the stomach is like, I need to stay warm, and we throw icy cold water, it kills it. Cold food kills it. So, you want to stay away from cold food and icy cold water. Icy cold water is, you know, it does harm in two ways. One is the stomach, you know, it cools the stomach down. As well as the cold water, when it runs down, it goes through the esophagus. And then right behind the esophagus are the coronary arteries. And the coronary artery are the one that feed the heart. You know, the heart is very selfish. It feeds itself first before feeding anybody else. So that runs right here. So when the cold pipe, cold water goes through the esophagus, it gets cold. And that constricts the coronary arteries. So it, every time we drink icy cold water, we are kind of constricting the heart. We are reducing the blood supply to the heart. So that's not great, right? Especially after a workout. You know, you go Bikram Yoga 120 degrees and you get icy cold water, you might have to hang yourself. <laughs> because the heart goes like, ah, like that. So, warm water is great. Okay? So that's about meals. The other thing I want to talk about is preferences. Like, you know, uh, years ago, we used to go to the library when you want to look up something. We go to the library and look up because there's a reference section. Where is our reference now? You know, if you're not sure what is good for you, somebody says standing on the head is good for you, somebody says, no, it will kill you. So what is good? You know, who can tell you that? Nobody but ourselves. So we need to have a reference to figure out what is the right thing for me to do. And for that, um, you know, for today's talk, three options. One is, if you're a very smart and intelligent person, if you make all your decisions based on reasoning, you know, question and figure everything out, then your reference should be up in between the eyebrows. Okay? Up here in between the eyebrows. If you're a very kind of touchy-feely person, you're very emotional, then your reference should be your heart. And if you're confused like me, at the navel. So, why navel? Because before birth, we were connected to the mother, to the umbilical cord. You know, they cut it off at the time of birth, but the wireless connection is still there. So it's easy, you know, you focus on the navel, you connect your mother, 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 the whole cosmic world. You know? So it's easy, more, more tangible. So, you know, uh, navel, heart, or your head. So building the reference, you have to kind of breathe into those areas. So you, every day, you know, you set a time, you know, evening or afternoon or morning, you sit down quietly, focus, let's say you want to focus at the navel. So you focus on your navel, you breathe into your navel, stretch your stomach out, you breathe out. Ten times, at least ten times, every day. To build that reference so when you want to go to your home, you know how to get there. You're like, okay, it's at the navel, close your eyes and you are there. You know where the home is. And when you are at your home, you know we are very comfortable. We can make all the good decisions when we are at home. Then if you have a question, then you focus on your reference and you ask that question, should I do that? And then if your whole body and heart goes like then you are like, oh, maybe not. <laughs> but everything is nice and comfortable, you know, so comfortable, you're relaxed. Then you know, like, maybe let's try it out, you know, maybe that's what it is. And if you're not sure, I just wait, you know, who cares? Like that, so that's your reference area. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about relaxation. So, you know, we, most of us, turn from human being into human doing. You know, like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. i got to do more of yoga, I'm going to do more of exercise, i got to eat more of protein, more. But you want to do more and more and more. So, when are we going to relax? So, relaxation is very important. Okay? And I brought it, I dropped it down in three categories. You know, some of us are like, computer specialists, you know, IT people, or, you know, sitting on the computer and looking at the screen all day long, the stress builds up in the head. There's so much stress in the head. 
So for those kind of people, you go home, lie face down like that, flat on the ground, you know, on your carpet. Keep your forehead down, grounded. Leave a little room so you can breathe easily like that, so straight up. And just breathe about 10 minutes. What that does is it grounds the head and then that breathing kind of relaxes. So in about 5-10 minutes, all the stress is like calm down. You know, the mental stress is grounded and you feel like a new person and then you can go about doing whatever you want. Construction work, physical work, you know, you carry all that stress on the back. So you want to lie flat down like this face up, so the whole back is grounded, and you just breathe about 5-10 minutes, and then you can kind of relax and get your stress out that way. About 5-10 minutes and you'll be ready to go. The third one is, you know, it's also a relaxation plus, like, you know, some of us find like there's too much activities in my life, you know, there's so much stuff going on. I mean, there's not a moment of, you know, ease in my life, I mean, there's so much stuff. Or some people are like, man, I'm stuck. There's nothing moving in my life. I have, you know, I need a new life. So, both cases, you know, you lie flat on the back. You're going to put your right hand on the navel and the left hand on the heart. Now, if you look at the body, it's organized, kind of longitudinally. The organs are like, you know, my heart is here, my lungs are here, stomach, spleen and all that, liver. They're all like, you know, bits and pieces here and there. But what divides the top? from the bottom is my diaphragm. So diaphragm is like, it seals everything. It seals the top from the bottom. So, you know, hand on the navel is at the bottom, hand on the heart is at the top. Now if you look at the organ wise, you know, at the top, I have my lungs, the lighter stuff, the heart, the lighter stuff is up there. Stomach, large intestine, all the heavier crud is down here. So essentially breathing into my stomach, 10 times and then breathe into the heart 10 times. So what that does is in a sense like, if people make bread, you know, you can make a bread like a brick because there's no air, no, so you know, if you mix air in there, then it's nice and fluffy. It's just like that, you know, if you're stagnant, life not moving, the lighter stuff gets mixed with the heavier stuff. So the heavier stuff starts moving, so the life starts moving, like okay, things are changing. Or if there's too much activity going on, then you take this heavier stuff, and then kind of mix it with lighter stuff. That sort of calms you down and grounds things up. So that, you know, about, it takes about 10 breaths before you can see some changes, at a minimum 10 breaths. So you can try that, and that helps to kind of stabilize the whole system. So that's all I wanted to cover. Any questions, comments, confessions, observations? Yeah. I don't do it. My kids do that too. I can't change them, but I make sure that I, you know, I, I do what I say is good. <laughs> That's it. And then, you know, over a period of time, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, look at us. We know what's right for us, but we've been doing wrong for so many years and maybe doing wrong now. Who knows? So, not to force them, but just doing what we feel is the right thing. And one day it'll click and then they get on. But I mean, we can just explain this. Cannot do it, you know. Or we can just advise that you know when you're drinking cold water, just keep it in your mouth for a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> They'll warm it up. <laughs> yeah. Any other question? All right. So yeah. So you can do oil pulling and at the end you can just use your fingers and then you know I mean you don't need to spit that up right you drink the oil. No, why waste money?
will tell you to throw your mouth and keep it outside. So mouth is a reflection of stomach, and stomach is a reflection of mouth. So it is homeopathic, right? So you give your smaller germs to the stomach, and it'll prepare, it'll make it ready for bigger and better things. Yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, you know, and sesame seed is good. Yeah, so just swallow it. Uh, it also gives a reflection of what's going on, you know, at the smaller scale to the stomach and help it kind of reorganize and arrange how what to do. Yeah, and then you know, I mean, a lot of a uh, lot of times we talk about gel maybe, you know, putting water in the nostril. In this country, it's better to do oil and water. In India, the temperature is like 100 degrees all the time. So when you do that water stuff, in like 5-10 minutes, afterwards it all comes out. In this country, an average temperature is like 72 degrees everywhere. And the water doesn't come out. You have to do great practices. You know, you have to do Bhastarika, Kapalavadi, forward bending movement before it all comes out. So the cold water in, the, in, in this nostrils and stuff, it kind of freezes and it'll do this. So it's better to use oil in this country. And one thing I forgot to mention is chew. You know, chewing the food. It doesn't matter what we eat, okay? It matters, but once it goes in, what matters is chewing. You know, last time I checked, there were no teeth in my stomach. I don't know, some of you might have it. So if you don't chew here, nobody else is doing it. And then the stomach is like, oh my God, like, you know, what do I do with this? And it gets messed up. It absorbs all the liquids and dries up and all the issues start. So chewing the food. You know, we don't have a choice sometimes in picking the food, but once we put it in the mouth, if you chew it, whatever it is, you know, it goes liquid, then it's going to be fine. So somebody has said, like, you know, uh, drink your solids and eat your liquids. So when you take the solid food, you chew it enough that you're drinking it, okay? And then the water, you chew it, because as you chew, it generates digestive juices again. So then there's nothing to digest, so whatever is left inside, it digests, like that. Alright? Any other question? So we have free yoga programs at the Hindu Center every Sunday, 9 to 10.30, every Wednesday, 6 to 7.30. So come and join us. One more? Yes, please. Yeah, sure. Somebody's asking how they could Yeah.